Welcome to this presentation on Dynamic Web Content Management. Dynamic Web is an all-in-one solution containing content management, e-commerce and online marketing capabilities. This presentation will focus on the CMS part and how Dynamic Web can be used to deliver a message that attract your customers. Dynamic Web is built to deliver powerful customer experience for all devices through all channels. It's user-friendly, it scales to handle all your content, including deployment for multiple websites, languages, and content editors. But let's have a look how Dynamic Web works. This is uh, my Dynamic Web installation and running my website dynamicweb.com. To access the actual administration where I handle all the content on the, on the website, I will go into dynagrip.com slash admin and this is where I log in as a content editor. Dynagrip is a uh, web browser uh, platform meaning that you don't have to install anything on your computer to, in order to run an installation. So the first do, the thing I do is I'm logging into the solution. I'm being met by the administration system of Dynagrip. It contains first of all a content pane up here where I have uh, the content of my website dynagrip.com and as we'll see later, you can also see all, all the other websites I'm running on this web uh, solution because I can run as many websites as I would like to. Down here, I have different areas of the system where I can handle the content, the files, users of the system, and my e-commerce uh, platform, marketing capabilities, all the add-in uh, application or modules for Dynagrip that can extend the functionality and a management center where I can set up how Dynagrip should behave. So, but let's have a look at some of um, the main capabilities of uh, working with content and how we can uh, manage content in our website. So I have my different pages and as you can see in the tree, I can have a, a very deep uh, structure with all the pages. I can right click a page and create new sub pages and basically create a, a tree of all the content that I wanna uh, have on this uh, website. Taking a look at the right pane, this is where I have my actual content. Uh, this is a piece of content being shown in the front end, boost your business. I have this full text editor and this is where I actually uh, edit my content. And I can also add as many paragraphs as, uh, as they're called on, uh, on this specific website. And this is how I would normally work with, with content. I also have the possibility of going into a what you see is what you get editing mode. So I get the entire page here and I can just click a piece of text and um, I can change how it would look like uh, directly in, in the browser and I, I see exactly how it's gonna look after I, I'm done editing. Um, so this is some of the ways I can edit a, a page. I also have a lot of uh, features in here where I can uh, uh, because this is content management, if, when I make any changes to this uh, paragraph, it's being shown right away. Uh, so if I um, change this one and, and cl uh, press save and close, this content is actually changed on the website right away. I have the possibility of going into a draft mode, meaning I can make changes uh, in my website uh, and see them before I go online so I can boost your business and go back to that again. Uh, and save and close this one. And now I can see I have a draft of this. So now I have different uh, features up here so I can see and compare uh, the published version where I just made the change and the unpublished version or the draft of, the, of this website. And I can approve my changes and go back to um, having my draft published. So now I basically have two equal versions. So that's how we can work with the um, uh, the draft modes in here. This also gives me the possibilities of see, seeing all the different version I've had of uh, this page. So I have a full version history. I can go in and see how my page looked at a specific time, or I can go compare my website to how it looked at previous times. You can see I didn't have a, a, a dots, but I do that in my new version right now. And I can basically go back to any of these versions uh, in my, in in my history and publish that again and see what I have. The last thing I'm gonna show you uh, in terms of uh, working with content is I also have the possibility of 
personalizing uh, my messages. Uh, in a later presentation, we're going to take a look at all the marketing capabilities. One of the things that I have here is I have the uh, possibility of personalizing this content. So I can write one message and I, instead of showing it to all my users, I can, uh, I can give this message to everyone who hasn't been profiled and everyone who has been profiled or segmented as content management users. Uh, content management users is actually anonymous visitors to my website where based on their behavior seems to be ha to having an interest in content management and I can save this uh, I'll not do it since it, uh, it's my online website or I could also have a message that are more e-commerce related and target that message to visitors on my website that has a behavior that um, indicates they have an interest in e-commerce which is uh, my other product area on this website. So this is how we work uh, very generally with the uh, content in DynamicWeb. The next I'm going to show you is how we work with files. We have a, a file manager in here where I have a, a range of uh, folders where I can keep uh, documents and images and all the other files that I use on my website. Uh, I can do a lot of things here. I can create, this is containing images. I have a, re a possibility of resizing all the images and generate thumbnails, controlling permissions and upload new files. Um, I'm just going to show you how you can work with images in, a, in an easy way. We have this uh, online editor where it, which makes it possible for me to crop my images or uh, even resize it to different um, sizes and I can rotate and flip my images all the things that I want and can I also apply effects uh, to my image and um, all of these things built into the editor uh, or to the browser so I don't have to install or do anything on on my local computer when I'm working with files I can simply just upload images to to the solution and work with them from here If we're having a look at how DynamicWeb works on different mobile devices, this is my website in a preview mode of the browser where I can scale to different browser sizes. So this size is a desktop size and as you can see I have my navigation and all my content uh, taking uh, all the place that we have available on a content website. So now I can scale down to a tablet side like an, an iPad and you can see now I have not the same amount of uh, space but and we can see how it seamlessly scale we have the navigation collapsing so now I'm moving into a mo mobile friendly uh, version of the content or the navigation but my paragraphs are still um, placed in a normal uh, order if I scale further down to uh, a phone instead you can see I scale in and instead of having my content uh, next to each other, it's now stacked on top of each other. So it's basically scaling to, to the device that I'm uh, browsing the website with. If we take a look at how we can also uh, react on some of these things in the back end, if I'm going into a piece of content, I have the possibility of saying that this specific piece of content, I don't want to show it on... Uh, on phones, so I can say hide for phones, meaning that this piece of content will not be shown for users browsing my website uh, using a smartphone. Uh, I can do the same for tablets and desktops. So in this way, I can target um, my message to different uh, audiences depending on their device. Of course, the text itself is, would be the same, but I might have different products on my uh, uh, mobile phone store than I would on my uh, other store, or I might want to limit the amount of uh, navigation items that are available on on mobile phones, so they don't have to browse the many as many things. I also have the possibility of hiding the entire page, so it's going away from the navigation if I'm browsing the website from a uh, smartphone. So this website also runs danagrip.com, but also our language versions of the same website, Danagrip DK and O and SE and so on. And what you can see here is uh, if I'm browsing into websites that I have a master website, which is my .com, an English language uh, we uh, website. And then I have my, all my uh, country websites as language versions of this one. That means if I create any new content on thanagrip.com, it will also appear on all the other websites 
um, when they are translated. So let's have a look at how that works. Going into the company page, I can see I have a language selector up here and I have a yellow bar indicating that this is a master language. I can switch between the languages, so I'll go to the Swedish one and I'll see the exact same page. Uh, instead of just having the English text, I have the Swedish text because I've been in here and translating this page. Uh, and when I create, if I add a new paragraph up here or create a new page in this uh, structure uh, on the left, these pages or these paragraphs will also appear unpublished on my Swedish or any uh, all the other language sites and just waiting for a translation. Uh, on the Swedish side, I have the, the uh, capability of comparing the uh, now the Swedish wor uh, version with the English version up here so I can see which changes have been made. And as you can see, it's not the exact same uh, things that I have here. I have a little more. Uh, information on my Swedish web page than I, uh, on my uh, English website that I do on my Swedish website. So I have a possibility as an editor to compare uh, two versions of uh, two language versions of the same page. Besides uh, working with content as, as I've shown you, um, Danegov also supports creating pages of different kinds. Um, so this is an event I'm looking at and um, you can see on an event section and I have some things that are related to this. This is just a regular uh, uh, page showing a list of something and all the events that I have, um, they follow a, a training and events item type. So these fields and these definitions that are, I'm available to, to fill out on this page is defined specifically for um, publishing events. Um, these are based on something in Dynagrip called items and these items are defined to contain exactly the uh, information that the editor needs to fill out to, to have an event. So this is an event. I also have a newsroom where I have my news items. They have a different icon and you can see the fields that I need to fill out in order to create an item is a bit different than what, what we saw from uh, creating an, an event. So this will lead the editor to fill out the fields with the right information and the actual actual publishing of the website will take care of how this should look and behave. Also the website has a possibility of creating forms like this one or if I have a page, a landing page of some sort, uh, uh, where I have a landing page um, targeted at specific campaign in my website. I have a web form in here that customers can fill out. I have the in a complete management of creating these web forms using uh, the forms module in, in Dynagrip. Um, this is where I create and manage my forms. In here I can see this is a certification sign up form and I have the add a possibility of adding fields and sorting how this uh, form should be uh, ordered and all of these things. And also Dynagrip contains a possibility of, uh, of working with uh, image galleries and all other kinds of um, uh, uh, content. So if we take a look at this one, I have a lot of images down here that can be, uh, be shown. I have a gallery where I can browse and magnify the images and all of these capabilities is all also available. This site also contains a news section. Um, this is my newsroom with a list of news items and this news section will automatically uh, publish any news item that are being created by the editors using the news section, uh, the news item type that we saw here in, in the administration before. The last thing I'm going to show you is how we can work with the um, uh, search engine optimization, which is a very important part of for, uh, working with a website. First of all, I have every page has a set of metadata where I can uh, handle things like title, description, and keywords, and how should we behave in terms of uh, robots, overriding canonical settings, which is uh, one of the things I can do on um, search engine optimization. 
I can also see the URL and I have the possibility of overriding the URL with something, uh, something specific if I don't like the auto-generated URL created by the system. Also, when I'm looking at a page like this one, I have the possibility of running a, uh, a search engine optimization wizard like this one. This one will help me uh, fulfill all the information that I need in order to be compliant with the uh, search engine uh, um, optimization. Um, so first of all, I choose what subject it should be. This one is content management and I get a list of things that I need to attend to. So I can see I get some errors out here, out here and I also get some warnings and I get some rights. So I'm 49% complete in terms of uh, search engine optimization on this one. First of all, I don't have the word content management as part of the heading. So I can add content management to, to the heading and it will say I'm now fully optimized. My description does not contain it either, so I'll change it. And I can work with the, all of this and now it says I should move it to the first part of uh, uh, to the string and I can work with the going up to 100% uh, completeness of uh, search engine optimization on this one and when I'm done I can save the changes and this page is uh, fully optimized. When having a page like this one I want to see how it performs and I have some reports in here where I can see how many visitors does this page have every day and how it evolves over time. Uh, I also have some other uh, reports in here so I can see which search engines and keywords they're coming from and uh, uh, basically also the distribution of my traffic uh, is it direct links links or are people bouncing off this page and I also have some uh, web page analysis t uh, telling me something about the performance of this uh, site or this page do I have too many images or do I have too many CSS files and so on this is more like a webmaster tool so that was the uh, general introduction to Dynagrip, the content management system. Of course, there's a whole lot more to, to the system, but this was a, a very brief and fast introduction to give you an idea of what our system can do. Thank you. Thank you for listening.